It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, Brian. So we've talked about side hustles and how to create passive income that way and how to do that right way. We've talked about real estate. Now let's talk about our favorite. And we think this is probably the simplest, but maybe not necessarily the easiest way to do that. And that's creating passive income through your portfolio, through investing in liquid marketable securities. And we have an example of someone who's kind of figured this out and it looks like he figured it out at a pretty young age. This is the easiest way for anybody to start earning passive income. It's actually the first method that I ever used. And of course, I'm talking about dividend investing. I started my portfolio 24 weeks ago, and we're currently sitting at $4,326.50. I'm still holding 10 different positions and an annual income. We're earning just over $118. By no means is that a crazy amount of money, but I also didn't do anything for it. And it's starting to build up. And that's honestly the best part of this portfolio. Even when the market's dipping like crazy, my dividend income isn't slowing down at all if anything my dividend yields are growing and so is my passive income so, so that was a great video right because he figured out that there is a way that he can put his money to work and it can create passive income for him really without him having to do a whole lot of anything yeah what i thought and he didn't say it but i just could see it on the visual of his video is that the top things that Noah had on there was he had a, a Vanguard S&P 500. Mm -hmm. He had a Charles Schwab um, where he had like a dividend-focused large cap investment. Mm -hmm. I like how easy, mm -hmm. and we there's not been a better time to be alive to be an investor um, because you can get access to index funds. You can get access to these things that focus on dividends for practically nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't always that way. I think we take it for granted now that you have not only educational opportunities with like the Money Guy Show, creating the knowledge to do stuff, but now you can actually implement with limited friction. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was starting to invest in the 90s, you had to go through a registered rep or a broker. They charged you a front-end commission. Nobody was really doing index funds at all. And it just there was a lot of cost. And it just doesn't have to be that way anymore. Yeah, I think what's interesting is he was talking specifically about dividend investing. Well, we know that when it comes to investment return, there are two components. There are the income component, which is dividends, and then there's the appreciation component, how things change in value. Well, the way that he was doing dividend and investing is he was going out and buying these specific type of things that have dividends or going out and buying specific companies. But you just hit on something so right, Brian, that it's pretty easy. If you're thinking about total return and you're trying to figure out how to make your money make money over the long term, if you don't want to try to be active, if you don't want to try out and go pick, try to go out and pick those funds or those securities, Index funds are out there and available. And what's great is it almost seems like the deck is stacked in their favor. If you look at the study recently from Spiva, over the last 10 years, 86% of domestic equity active managers underperform their comparison index. That means rather than go out and try to pick the ones that can do the best, just buy the index and you're all, all, all almost assured to set your up for success. A lot of A's in that. Well, I think it's interesting that I look at my own life and how we're creating success, not only for our clients, but also for ourselves, Bo. I'm always buying every month. Yep. I actually buy three to four times a month because I've told you guys, I've confessed that I like dollar cost averaging so much that I do it pretty much weekly. That's happening no matter what's going on in the world. Now, look, we love real estate investing, but I'm waiting for the right deal to come sure. my way. I'm always looking. So I can't count on that. That's not consistent in the fact because I have to have the perfect deal where the numbers work. You and I, anytime a property comes available in downtown Franklin, we run the numbers. through our network of knowing some of the other owners, we all talk and you and I run the numbers and it just doesn't happen that often that things line up where the purchase price matches what you can do cash flow and so forth. But here's the great thing about index investing. It doesn't matter what's going on. Mm -hmm. Markets can be good. I'm always going to be buying. Markets can be down right now. We've got about a 14, 15% coupon on the economy right now. I'm always going to be buying. That's the part that I like. And, and look, even if you want to dabble in the real estate, that's where we get to come back and marry the two steps that I was just talking about. You can still do the REITs. You mm -hmm. can still do the real estate index funds. There's 
all kind of opportunities to let your money do the heavy lifting for you. And what I think is so great is you've heard us use this example all the time. We know that for a 20-year-old, $1 can turn into $88 by the time that you get to 65. But let's, let's not just talk about a marginal decision, a single $1. Let's think about $10,000. If you were a 20 year old right now and you had $10,000 and you were gonna live off of that money, it could generate about 4% withdrawal, $400 a year in passive income for you. Probably not gonna change your life, but if you can take that $10,000 and you can put it to work for you, that single $10,000 investment has the opportunity by the time you get to retirement to turn into almost $900,000. Well, now if you apply a 4% withdrawal rate to that, that can generate um, over $35,000 of passive income. This is how you go about creating passive income that can literally make money for you while you sleep, while you sleep and have checks show up in the mailbox. By the way, a lot of you, you're seeing this, and I, I, it hit me while you're going through this, Bo. My oldest daughter is 19 years mm -hmm. old, and I think it's so interesting because we just had a conversation because we were getting her taxes all wrapped up, and she just, because realize she's been working, and we've had um, a dollar-for-dollar dollar match program in the Preston household, meaning that whatever she puts in her custodial Roth IRA, it used to be a custodial, now it's full now Roth it's IRA, <laughs> it, um, I did a dollar-for-dollar dollar match, and what I find interesting is that her Roth IRA now has eleven over eleven thousand dollars in it. That's mm -hmm. all. It's by the way, it didn't start overnight that way. Yep. She started saving and investing at age fifteen, and it has turned into eleven thousand dollars. Probably about twenty five percent of that is actually growth mm -hmm. from the portfolio, even with the current volatility. And it warms my heart to think about her, who's nineteen years old. So her her situation is even a little better than this. But there's a chance that she's close to a millionaire yep. just in her Roth, tax-free Roth IRA. Now, look, I know all the trolls are climbing out of the bridges right now and saying inflation will have an impact on that. But still, you don't get to $10 million without having that first That's million exactly right. right there. I mean, it gets so much easier. We had a couple in here just yesterday doing a tour of the studio, and they were talking about how fast it went from $1 million to $2 million mm -hmm. in a number in very short number of years. It took them like 20-plus years to get to $1 million, mm -hmm. and then they were able to turn one into two in just like three to five years. Yep. And I'm like, the exact same thing happens. You got to get to that critical mass point ASAP. This is the easiest thing for anybody, even if you're going to be a real estate investor, even if you're going to start your own venture through a side hustle, no matter what you do, I don't care if it's $50 a month, start doing some passive investing into index funds so your money one day can work harder than you can with your back, your brains, and your hands. I, I love it, Brian, because uh, earlier we talked about side hustles, right? Like, And it's hard to figure out what's the right side hustle to do and how to know this one's going to stick and how to know it's going to make money. It requires some effort, so it's not super passive. Real estate, you got to figure out what property am I going to buy? And am I going to do residential? Am I going to do commercial? And you got to be active. You got to figure that out. We even had somebody that come in the chat right now, Brian, say, hey, man, just if only Brian's daughter could figure out the next Apple or Tesla. And yeah, that would be exciting. But you know what? She doesn't have to. Because you can invest passively in low-cost index funds, the deck is already stacked in your favor. So if you want to start building passive income, if you want to think about ways to approach passive income, know the reason why, know why you're trying to get there, understand what that passive income can do for you, and make sure that whichever avenue you go down, you're doing it the right way.